Hi guys, it's Webby, welcome back to another video. Uh, as you can see behind me today, I've got the very latest and brand new Ford Ranger Raptor. Um, the car's actually been out a few months now, um, but every time I've had the opportunity to film with the car, the weather's been crap. Um, because you know, if you live here in Melbourne, you know what the summer and spring has been like recently. Um, today, at least, I've got a bit of blue sky and sunshine. Um, but as you can see behind me, if you look at the trees, it's blowing an absolute gale. So apologies if the noise and the sound from the microphones is a little bit strange today. Um, kind of just have to grin and bear it because, um, yeah, I just wanted to make the video of the Raptor. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at this new car. Uh, I'm sure you've seen plenty of videos about this car already, uh, but I want to sort of give you my take on it and my thoughts and opinions. Uh, maybe show you some of the bits and pieces that you might not have seen in other videos. Um, so we'll start on the outside first, work our way inside, uh, and then actually go for a bit of a drive. So as with all new generation Ford Rangers, the front styling of the car is very, very different to the old model. Um, it's got that sort of F1 and 50 inspired look with the C-shaped uh, LED daytime running lamps. Uh, it keeps the massive Ford grill, um, Ford logo across the front of the grill, uh, which is obviously the first one that you can see that this is the Raptor. Um, like the previous model, the bodywork is much wider than a standard Wildtrak or an XLT or something like that. Uh, we've got the standard matrix LED headlights, uh, which is what you get on the uh, premium pack on a Wildtrak uh, and also on the recently announced Ranger Platinum. Uh, under the bonnet is also one of the biggest changes to this car as well. Uh, so they've ditched the 2 litre twin turbo diesel from the old model uh, and they've now brought out this fantastic 3 litre V6 twin turbo engine. Uh, develops nearly 300 kilowatt and just under 600 newton meters of torque uh, and runs through the 10 speed automatic gearbox. Um, and when I say it's got to be sort of, you've got to experience this thing to sort of know exactly what it's like. Um, whether that's just on a standard road, whether you manage to find a good off-road track to take it out on, this thing is an absolute beast. Um, I was lucky enough to go on a Ford training day um, back in about sort of July time, I think it was. Um, so we got to take the car off-road. Um, you know, we tried all the different sort of driving modes, the diff locks. Um, and honestly, I was absolutely gobsmacked as to how good this thing is. Um, really, really surprised me. Um, and then the fact that you can go and do power slides and throw dirt everywhere um, and have just an absolute laugh is just a beast of a car. Um, yeah, if you've got a spare 90 odd grand and a, a massive field that you want to churn up to mud in, grab yourself one of these and just, just go and have some fun. It's, it's just so good. Um, so anyway, that's the, uh, a bit about the front of the car. Um, let's have a bit of a walk around and look at some of the other features as well. Continuing on from the previous model Ranger Raptor, uh, we've got the 17 inch wheels with the BF Goodrich all terrain tyres, that's standard. Um, the suspension, which is obviously the bit that you can't really see on this car, has also been upgraded as well. The old model had the Fox Racing suspension, uh, but this one has taken a little bit a step further, so it's got the Fox Racing Live suspension. So it's literally adapting hundreds of times per second, quicker than you can even think about it, and, and it adapts to whatever terrain you're driving on. So be that no, whether you're on a bitumen, whether you're on a dirt road, um, the gravel road, whatever, or if you're going through potholes or bump, bumps and lumps, um, the suspension is just, you know, so you've got to drive it to sort of believe it really, it's just fantastic. Um, so yeah, so wheels and tyres exactly the same as before. Um, we've also got these big chunky metal side steps the same as before. Um, it's actually quite nice because they're sort of textured. So if you get on there with like muddy boots, um, you know, you will grip your own sort of slide off like you get on the plastic ones uh, on some of the other models. Coming around to the back of the new Raptor, uh, we've got twin exhausts, one either side. Um, because you've got the exhaust, you do lose the, the side step that you get on the standard model ranges. Um, I think I'd rather have the twin exhaust myself and it sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, this particular car has got a soft tonneau cover. Um, you get a standard, you get the, uh, the spraying tub liner uh, on the Raptor, but for 2023 models onwards, you can actually order it with an electric roller shutter. So similar to what you get on a wild track, but you just don't get the sort of sail plane at the front of the cab. Um, that's a three and a half thousand dollar option. If you do choose that, the tub liner changes from the spraying version to the plastic version you would get on something like a wild track. Um, so you can still get that obviously protection for the a tub liner would give you but then you get an electric roller shutter, which obviously works off of your key, which is great for security, obviously keeping stuff dry. Um, just a bit more practicality as well. 
Um, it's good to see that things obviously like a tow bar is standard. You also get factory fitted integrated electric brakes as well. Um, so although this can only tow two and a half ton, the day you pick it up, this thing is ready for towing. Um, so yeah, literally drive out of the dealership, hook something up and off you go, you can tow with the, uh, with the Raptor. Um, let's have a bit of a look inside now, because again, some of the other changes, as with all the other models of Rangers, have been on the inside. It's completely redesigned and it's absolutely fantastic. So let me show you inside. Now before we go inside to this car, um, if you are enjoying this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Um, also subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to find out when the next video goes live. 2022 has been a massive year for my channel. Um, I've really appreciated everybody watching the videos, liking, subscribing, all the comments and questions that I've had. Uh, it has been absolutely fantastic. So I want to say a big thank you. Um, just coming out to 2 million views on the channel as well. Uh, by the time this video goes out, I might even have hit it, it's because it's very, very close. Uh, so again, a huge thanks to everybody that supported me uh, throughout 2022. There'll be a heap more stuff coming for 2023. Uh, so yeah, make sure you are subscribed and hit the notification bell um, because then you'll be notified of all the exciting stuff coming next year. Um, things like the Ranger Platinum for one. Uh, really looking forward to doing a video on that car um, when that comes along, which is going to be sort of May, June time. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for that. Um, anyway, let's jump inside the Raptor and have a look around. All right, so let's have a look inside this new Ranger Raptor then. Uh, obviously keyless entry, as you'd expect. Um, and then you open up to this whole new interior, um, completely different from the previous model Ranger Raptor. These new seats are absolutely superb. Uh, I love the sort of mixture of textiles and colours here. Um, so you've got this sort of leather section here, uh, down the bottom here as well. These side bolts in here are suede, uh, which is really nice, gives you a bit more sort of grip. Uh, I do like the orange sort of accents around the seats as well. I love the Raptor logo there, just in the, uh, the back of the seat. It uh, looks fantastic. Um, the orange theme continues around the car as well. You've got a little bit more there on the bottom of the seat. You've got the Raptor logo there again. We've got the 12 o'clock stripe on the steering wheel. And then we've got some cool features like orange accents around the air vents as well. Um, and then that carries over there in the middle uh, to the middle air vents too. So let's jump in uh, and have a bit more of a look around. Ah, so now we're in and out of the wind, which is fantastic because it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit blowy out there today. So as you can see, uh, interior is very, very similar if you've been in any sort of the new generation ranges recently. Uh, it looks very, very similar. Uh, let's just bring this car into life and I'll show you some of the startup graphics, which are quite cool. Uh, so the startup button, I don't know if you can see, there you go. It's just on the right hand side of the steering column now, uh, instead of being on the left hand side from the previous model. Right, so let's bring this into life then. Push your foot on the brake, push the start button. And there you go, nice little sort of start-up graphic there uh, in front of the driver. Let's just get rid of that. So the other thing you get on the uh, and the Raptors over and above things like the Wildtrak is you get this larger 12.4 inch uh, digital driver display. Uh, so it's much wider, you do get a bit more information uh, than you get on the smaller version. Uh, particularly these four graphics at the top here. Uh, the right one is obviously your fuel tank, uh, the left hand one is your engine temperature. The two in the middle, you can actually adjust uh, to be what you want them to be. Uh, so you can basically choose uh, what you want in those middle two. Uh, so we've got transmission temperature and oil temperature. Um, two sort of uh, readouts I think would be quite important, whether you're going off-road in, whether you're going for a bit of an enthusiastic drive, um, I think those pieces of information would actually be really handy to have. Um, over to the right hand side we've got the digital um, speedo. Uh, over to the left, um, that obviously tells you what gear you're in, you've got your rev counter, um, obviously your gear indicator down the bottom there as well. And then just below that you've got the three indicators um, to tell you which different modes the exhaust, suspension and steering are in. Um, obviously just to write to that you've got the um, temperature gauge. Uh, coming over to the right hand side, it then tells you what mode the four wheel drive system is in. Uh, something I'll explain a little bit further in a moment. Uh, it tells me the car is pointing north, how many k's we've done. I've turned off the stop start system at the minute. The lane keeping aid is active and at the minute I haven't got my seatbelt on because I'm stationary. Um, so let me just zoom out slightly further there. Uh, in the middle we can see we've got the trip computer at the minute. And we can actually change what's displayed and how certain things are set up with these buttons here on the right hand side of the steering wheel. 
so things like we can change what mode uh, the exhaust is in. Uh, so when you press that, you've then got the, it starts off in normal mode, but then you can switch to sport. You've got the Baja, and then you've got the quiet mode as well. Um, so quiet mode is obviously if you don't want to annoy your neighbors in the morning. Um, but yeah, by default, the car will actually start in normal um, and sounds pretty amazing actually uh, for a V6. Uh, not quite a V8 that I know a lot of people wanted, uh, but a V6 twin turbo is still pretty darn quick. Uh, the next one is where you can adjust the suspension. So again, when you press that, uh, comes up on the screen, gives you your options of what you can choose. So normal, sport or Baja or kind of your off-road setting. Um, and then you've got the, the one for the steering here as well. Uh, so again, three settings, you've got normal, you've got comfort, and you've got sport. Uh, so normal is like a nice balanced setting, comfort is a bit lighter, uh, sport is a little bit heavier. So if you are sort of uh, doing a bit of off-roading or attacking some twisty roads, sport is pretty good. Um, we've then also got the buttons here, you can change uh, preset radio stations or track selection on something like a Spotify playlist. Uh, you've got the up and down arrows, so that will change what you're looking at on the screen. So for example, if I press down just to cycle through your trip computers, your fuel economy, uh, but your stop starts driving, how many seatbelts are plugged in, uh, and then it allows you to go into your driver assistance menu. Uh, then we've also got the Raptor button. Now this is one where you can program um, all these settings here and then have them saved. So if you press the Raptor button there, so it tells you what mode the car is currently in. Hang on, let me just press that again, didn't stay there for long. So there you go, it tells you um, that the car's in normal, steering's in comfort, suspension's in normal, exhaust is in Baja. And um, if I press that again, it takes you into my mode. So you can switch between your saved settings um, and uh, yeah, sort of just tailor things to sort of how you want them to be basically. Uh, the other button we've got here, just there, that one with the little lines and the arrow, it's basically where you can just go into your menus just to adjust certain things. Uh, so basically what you want to see, uh, so again we use that up and down arrow, we just cycle through the different settings um, of the things that you want to see on the screen now and things you can adjust. So it's pretty straightforward and then with the main menu, again you can go and show things like your off-road, you can go into your towing mode and these are other things you can have displayed uh, on the main screen. But also then allows you to go into settings to actually adjust and show things um, on that display there. So it's um, yeah, a little bit of information on the, on the right hand side of the steering wheel there. Um, but it's actually quite easy to use once you get your head around it. Uh, the cruise control, the adaptive cruise control, um, new for the new generation Ranger Raptor because the, uh, the previous model didn't have adaptive cruise control, uh, only had standard cruise control. Uh, so this works in exactly the same way as any other Ranger. Um, so you've got your on and off button there, you can flick the little rocker switch up or down to adjust your speed. The middle one when you press it in is your cancel and your resume button. And then the top right hand one, adjust the gap between you and the car in front uh, for the adaptive cruise control. Uh, the, the one underneath that allows you to turn the lane keeping aid on and off. Uh, you've then also got a separate function for speed limiter. Uh, we've got volume control for the radio and then also voice control as well. Uh, and that can be the standard voice control or you can use Siri if you've got an iPhone. Uh, which I have. Uh, coming down then, we've got the controls here for the uh, integrated electric brake controller. Uh, and then we've got the 12 inch SYNC 4 infotainment display. Uh, I actually really like this system. Uh, I think it's one of the easiest systems I've used uh, and I've used quite a few different ones. Um, it's, just, it's just nice, it's kind of a big display. Uh, it's really, really easy to use, especially if you've got a smartphone like an iPhone or an Android. Um, you'll pick up exactly how it uses really easily. Um, it's got this nice sort of big section here. Obviously, you can have your maps, you can have your radio, uh, whatever you want. You've got some previously used apps just here. Um, so if you've recently used your audio or if you've had your, your, your CarPlay connected, you can just switch back to that quite easily. Um, you've got the air conditioning controls here. It would actually be nice, and this is only one gripe I've actually got about the system, is if this bar here was to disappear when you're not using it, um, then it would give the whole rest of the map a much bigger um, sort of footprint, if you like. So if this would just uh, you know, disappear when you don't need it, that would be quite handy. 
Um, but other than that, the actual system is really, really easy to use. Pretty straightforward, you've got your temperatures either side, you can press it on auto. We've got your heated seats here, so again, really easy to use. But it's also nice to see that we've got some physical buttons here too. So again, two dials here, so you can adjust the temperature up and down quite easily. This one will give you the volume for your radio. We've got recirculation for the air conditioning system and also the hazard warning lights. We can do the fan speed manually for the air conditioning rather than have it on automatic. Fast steam is for the front windscreen uh, and then a maximum air conditioning button if it's a really hot day. Um, but as I say, generally really easy to use. Uh, your middle button there at the top takes you into your main functions of the system. My, car, my phone isn't actually connected at the minute because you can't um, film and also have your, your phone connected via Apple CarPlay at the same time because it just goes really laggy. Uh, I actually like using my phone for filming because you've always got it with you, the picture quality is great and it's just dead simple um, and saves you having to spend thousands of dollars on an expensive camera. Um, I've actually done a separate video uh, of how to use the Sync4 system. So if you want to know how to use it, how to set it up, uh, I'll put the link in the top right hand corner of this video uh, so you can go and check that out. Uh, there is one thing that is um, an additional function specific to the Raptor. Uh, so we hit that little car button there, uh, go into settings, I'll come a little bit closer, uh, and then we go to the vehicle button. And this is basically to do with uh, the active exhaust. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit there. So you can see a, uh, a tab that says quiet start. So when we hit that, and if that's turned on, it means you can actually set a quiet time. So if you are one of those people that maybe goes to work early in the morning, um, you can actually set it between two particular hours. So this is between five and 6 a.m. at the moment. That when you start the engine on your car, the exhaust will automatically default into quiet mode, um, which I think is really, really good because it's obviously very considerate towards your neighbors uh, and maybe other people in your house that are still in bed uh, while you're off going to work. Uh, so yeah, really handy function. Uh, anyway, so coming down below that, uh, we've then got um, the wireless charging pad there for your phone. We've got a USB-A and a USB-C charging point so you can plug in uh, additional devices as well, plus a little bit of storage there. Um, the reason you've got the wireless pad is because on the Sync 4 system, um, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are both wireless, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, we've then got the e-shifter for the 10-speed automatic gearbox. Um, again, really easy to use. Um, you've actually got paddles here as well, like we had on the previous Ranger. And a metal as well, which is cool, they're not plastic. Uh, we've then got a couple of cup holders there, which is great. Um, you've probably heard of these little sort of Easter eggs that Ford have been putting in their cars. So we've got, if we look in here, you can just about, there's the chip packet that a lot of people have been talking about. But in the cup holders as well, uh, if I zoom in slightly, there you go. It's basically telling you what you can put in here. Uh, so you could put in a mobile phone, your sunnies, a coffee, or your keys. Um, so it's actually quite a neat little trick that Ford have done um, to put some little sort of Easter eggs around the car for us. Uh, so then we come down, we've got an electronic handbrake. Uh, that's really, really simple to use. You pull the lever up to turn it on, then you just touch the accelerator to deactivate it automatically. Uh, then we've got some more buttons here as well. Uh, so we've got the active park assist, um, a feature that I did a video on recently, which is on uh, Wild Track, it's also on Everest Platinum. Uh, we'll also be coming on Ranger Platinum next year as well, which is great. Uh, so again, if you want to watch the video on how to use your Active Park Assist, I'll put a link in the top right hand corner, uh, and then you can go and watch that one when you get a, uh, well, basically when you finish watching this video. Um, then you can turn off your traction control. That button there will allow you to disengage the Active Stop Start. Um, so that's the system where it cuts out traffic lights and then restarts when you take your foot off the brake. Uh, and then we've got the off-road mode. Uh, so when we press this button here, on the screen, you'll see off-road mode come to life. So basically what we've got here then, so the front camera uh, is showing up in this top section here, and the white lines are your tyre tracks. So it's basically showing you that in an off-road situation, what's ahead of you. So if you were coming up to sort of a sudden drop or there was a tree stump, um, sticking out of the ground that you hadn't seen. Uh, it makes it really handy to see these things before you, know, you end up having a bit of a, either an accident or um, causing some damage to your car. It then also allows you to do things like um, 
the rear and the front diff lock you can turn those on and off uh, then you've also got your descent control as well um, so you can adjust those things turn them on and off um, as you want to um, so that's the uh, the off-road mode and then we come down to this little dial here um, so like the previous generation Raptor um, we've got the four high uh, we've got four low we've got two high um, but now we've also got full-time four-wheel drive as well uh, and it's literally just a case of you press the button and then it will switch over into whichever mode you decide you want to have then we've got this dial here so this dial here like other model in the range lineup um, when you twist it it will actually put the vehicle into different drive modes as you can see just written there on top of the dial so let me show you what we've got so when we twist that let's just zoom in a little bit uh, so there on the display i'm going to twist the drive mode so obviously we start off in normal we then twist it clockwise we go to sport and each time you change it it changes the graphic but then it also changes the four wheel drive mode as we saw there so now that's actually switched into full-time four wheel drive because i've put the car into sport mode if we then flick again we've then got slippery mode we've then got mud and ruts actually you can see that's now changed into four high so let's put it into permanent four wheel drive and it's telling you that that's for off-road use only so don't try that uh, on a sealed bitumen road because um, you'll start doing some damage to your car uh, when we twist it again we've got sand i do love these graphics they're pretty cool uh, someone's obviously taken a lot of time and uh, probably cost a lot of money to design all that uh, and then we switch over to baja mode um, so this is the mode where you've probably seen adverts on the tv of it doing big skids and dust everywhere and um just so i was having an absolute blast but you'll also see just down here in the bottom left that everything has changed to bar high mode as well so you see the cactus and the little flag um symbol next to each of the uh like the exhaust suspension and steering and which does change for other modes as well like your sport and other bits and pieces um, so they actually put a lot of thought into everything they've done for this, uh, these drive modes. Uh, and then the last one is the rock crawl. Um, so obviously that's designed for people that are doing sort of low speed off-roading. So as you can see, it automatically puts the car into four low. Um, once I've put the gearbox into neutral, so if I do that, and there you go, so it's finally switched into uh, four low. So there you go, you can see um, Basically everything switched off over this side, your traction control, stability control, your safety stuff. Um, again, your exhaust and suspension uh, and uh, steering have been changed as well. Uh, it shows the vehicles in four low and we're in that sort of rock crawling mode over there as well. Um, so it's good that you can just literally twist the dial and the car will change everything for you. Uh, it makes life really, really easy, especially if you're a beginner uh, going off-roading. Right, so now we've finished playing with the dials. Uh, we've also got um, a decent sized bit of storage under there. Um, there's a 12 volt socket under there as well, no USBs unfortunately, uh, but still a decent amount of space. You can put plenty of stuff under there. Now in terms of driving position, uh, it's really, really comfortable in here. These seats are super supportive. Um, the steering wheel is just the right sort of thickness and size. Um, you do get these sort of cutouts where your thumbs can go. Um, and it's just easy to sort of reach the paddles if you want to sort of you know, change gear yourself. Um, it's also nice that the steering wheel adjusts in and out as well, um, because on the previous version of the Ranger, uh, and this was throughout the range, um, you can only adjust the steering wheel height up and down, you couldn't go in and out. Uh, so it's nice to see that that function is now available uh, on the new Ranger lineup. Um, so yeah, in terms of driving position, absolutely fantastic. Really good visibility out the front. Uh, great visibility out the side. The wing mirrors are huge as well, um, so you get decent uh, visibility out the wing mirrors. Um, and also blind spot monitor is standard as well, which is fantastic. Um, so let's um, have a look in the back and see how much space we've got there uh, and any other features that are there for the rear passengers. So as you could probably see there, the rear door actually opens nice and wide, so it's easy to get in and out. It's really handy having these grab handles on the side as well. Uh, and then obviously you can use the step on the side of the vehicle and also the grab handle to make it nice and easy to actually get inside. Once you're in, um, I've actually got quite a decent amount of legroom. 
Um, I can just about fit my feet under the driver's seat. Um, if the driver was to raise this seat a little bit further, that would make it even better. Uh, headspace isn't too bad. There's actually a pretty decent amount of headspace. Um, I'm quite lucky I'm not particularly tall, I'm only five foot six, so I can pretty much fit behind anybody. And if I'm driving, anybody can fit behind me. So that's actually quite good. It's also nice to see that we've got air vents in the back as well, uh, something that was missing on the previous generation Ranger. We've then also got down the bottom a USB-A and a USB-C uh, charging point. Uh, so great for you know kids in the back who want to charge up mobile phones or iPads or anything like that. We've also got the obligatory fold-down armrest, which has got a couple of cup holders there in the middle as well. And if you are going to be carrying um, baby seats in the back of the Raptor, the outer two seats have actually got the isofix mounting points as well. Uh, so that's really, really handy as well. Right, so now we're going to take the Raptor for a drive because I want to see what it's like out on the open road and test out some of these drive modes. And even just driving slowly, just through the housing estate like I am at the minute, you definitely feel the size of the Raptor um, and you can feel that it's a bit special as well. Um, it's just got a bit of a sort of an aura about it. Um, whether it's sort of like because you can hear the noise of the exhaust, you can see that orange stripe on the steering wheel in front of you, um, you just know it's something a little bit special. You can actually get it wrapped in some really good colours as well, other than this black. Um, you can get your traditional white. Uh, you can also get aluminium, which is like a light silver. You've got meteor grey, which is the darker grey. Uh, you've then also got blue lightning, which I haven't actually seen yet. Um, then you've got code orange, you've got Sedona orange, and then you've also got Conquer grey. There's actually a really big choice of colours this time around, because um, the old model didn't have that many. If I was going to buy one of these myself, I think I'd probably go Conquer grey, which is like that sort of Nardo grey, um, yeah, sort of the non-metallic glossy finish, um, just because it's unique to the Raptor. Um, and I also think it suits this car really, really well. Like all other models in the Ranger lineup, um, you get actually a five year warranty with this car, unlimited mileage. Um, you also get cap price servicing, so the first four services uh, are capped at 329 each, um, which is good to hear because, you know, at the end of the day, this is a little bit more than your, your average um, sort of Ranger, if you like. So, in terms of pricing for the Raptor, well, you, you won't get one of these things for sort of at least 12 months. Um, so that puts it into sort of 2023 model. Um, pricing for that is 86,790 plus on road costs. Uh, you've then got $700 if you want metallic paint. And if you want the factory fitted roller shutter, uh, that's a further 3,500. You can get the beadlock alloy wheels, which are 2,000. And you can also get the graphics package. So you get like the sort of stripes down the side of the car, uh, which is 750 from memory. Um, but yeah, I haven't sold anybody a car with the beadlock wheels, and I haven't sold anybody with the, uh, the sticker package. Um, I've had a few people that have ordered it with the electric roller shutter now, um, just because I think that's a really good idea. You're going to need something on the back, uh, so whether you have a roller shutter or a canopy, you'll need something. Um, so yeah, quite a few people have opted to, uh, to get the electric roller shutter, which is a good idea. Now one conversation I often have with my customers uh, when talking about Raptors is they ask me about fuel economy. It's a strange question in a way because this is a two and a half ton dual cab U with a three litre twin turbo V6 petrol engine. Ford rated at 11 and a half litres per hundred, uh, which I think has been extremely generous because um, I've never seen one do 11.5 um, unless you were driving in you know, carpet slippers and uh, you know you had your grandma in the passenger seat I don't think you're ever going to get 11.5 um, I reckon as an, an average you're probably going to be sort of near a 15 or 16 litres per hundred um, and then if you're going to go off road or have a bit of fun and have an enthusiastic drive shall we say yeah that would be well into the 20s and the trouble is it's really addictive Every time you put that uh, the throttle down, you can hear that nice sort of noise from the exhaust, and it's just like makes you want to keep doing it. And um, yeah, just a, such a fun thing to drive. I like the view out of the front windscreen as well, because you can see the 
the vents on top of the bonnet. Um, so it looks sort of quite purposeful and um, just reminds you of what you're actually driving. Uh, on the inside, you also get these overhead switches as well. Um, the auxiliary switches, which is part of that premium pack on the wild track. Um, and it's standard on the um, Ranger Platinum. Handy if you're gonna hook up. Um, now, if you're gonna put some sort of ball bar on the front, there's not, there's not a lot of option with ball bars, to be honest, on these things. Um, but if you're gonna put a ball bar on a winch or spotlights or something like that, then having the auxiliary switches overhead is actually quite handy. When you're driving along, you can actually feel, it feels like a bigger car than a normal Ranger. Even though inside it's exactly the same dimensions, on the outside it's physically bigger and you, you can definitely feel that when you're driving. Um, although you sit up a little bit higher as well, which is a benefit, but it just feels like a big chunky car. I haven't tried parking in a supermarket yet. Uh, I suspect that could be quite interesting. Um, but then we've got the 360 cameras as standard, so that should, uh, that should help things. Now every time I make a video, whether it's a car that I've got from work or from a different dealership or manufacturer, I always try and give my honest opinion. Um, even though I work for Ford, you know, I'm not just going to sit here and say, oh yeah, it's the best thing in the world just because I work for Ford. There are a couple of downside edges there are on every single car that you, know, you can buy these days because no car is perfect. Um, downsides to this would be I suppose the biggest downside would be the towing. Because a lot of people who buy dual cab you want three and a half ton towing. But I think the Raptor's been around long enough now that people know it can only tow two and a half ton. And at the end of the day, this is that's an expensive toy basically. Um, yeah, it can tow two and a half ton and it will do it absolutely fine. But it's not really a workhorse type of dual cab you. So when you're spending you know, well over ninety thousand dollars for a dual cab U. It's up there, definitely up there. Um, so yeah, it would probably have to be either your daily driver or just something you use at weekends um, to have a bit of fun with. So now I'm on the freeway. So I thought I'd come on here just to see what it's like. Um, you know, cruising at a constant speed. Uh, it's actually pretty relaxed. Um, it's a really, really windy day today, so you can hear a fair bit of wind noise, but um, that wouldn't matter what car you're in, it's ridiculous outside today. Um, yeah, there's not too much tyre noise, considering we've got the big BFG KO2s on there, and uh, that's pretty good. So there you go, that is the 2022 Ranger Raptor, uh, and obviously a little bit of information regarding the 2023 model. So, if you've got any questions, obviously leave them in the comment section for me below. Um, I'll answer them as soon as I can. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and also hit that notification bell to find out the next time a car review goes live. Um, so that just leaves me to say thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed the video, uh, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.